Welcome to another great episode right here on IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Ronnie Wong, and today we're going to be taking a look at Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 1. And we have with us in the studio today, Mr. Todd Lanley, who's going to help make sure that we are focused right in on those exam objectives in getting ready for this new exam that's out. So, Todd, welcome back to our studios. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, guys. I'm going to jump right into our first episode, Internetworking. Define exciting terms like collision domains, <laughs> broadcast domains, and even the term Internetwork. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, on this one here, we have the basic network. And I, if you guys are following along with my book, I use the same figures uh, throughout this video course that I will in my book, so you should be able to follow along chapter by chapter. Now, that being said, Bob's going to talk to Sally. I use that analogy a lot. Sally doesn't really like Bob, as you'll find out as we go through <laughs> these episodes. But nonetheless, Bob wants to communicate with Sally, maybe get a file from her or something. So he'll use a uh, file transfer protocol. Maybe we'll use FTP. And he'll say, hey, FTP Sally, you there? And really, his host doesn't even communicate to Sally. It has to do something first. What is that, Ronnie, you think? We normally have to do something called name resolution. Name resolution, like ding, ding, ding. So we have to, and DNS is pretty important. Now, in the world where we're running mostly IP version 4 today as, as users, in our back, you know, ISPs are using IP, more IPv6, um, saying something like uh, Telnet or FTP 1.1.1.1, which is Sally's IP, isn't a big deal. But DNS becomes a much bigger deal when we get to IP version 6. But also, if we didn't have DNS, we wouldn't be able to get to places on the internet too, because we'd have to know every IP address on the internet. That could be a little cumbersome. <laughs> Nonetheless, DNS is going to resolve Sally's address to an IP address, and in this example, something simple, right? 1.1.1.1. Now, Bob has almost everything he needs to use to communicate to Sally. He still needs to get her MAC address. MAC address. Thank you very much. If we are on a LAN, I don't communicate using IP addresses. I use that IP address to get someone's MAC address, hardware address, burned in address, whatever you want to call it. And nonetheless, Sally is going to send that, or he's going to look in his ARP cache. But when he gets it in a host, he's going to save that for, I think Windows keeps it for about nine minutes, but Cisco routers keep it for four hours. All right, so basically now we're going to broadcast an ARP address resolution protocol, get Sally's MAC address. Now Bob can communicate to Sally, but on this basic network we were creating, we just created connecting segments together here so they can share resources like files and printers and whatnot. That's why we created the basic network, right? So in the basic network here we have hubs and all they read is digital signal work at something called layer one, and all we do is read the digital signals. Now inside here we encode the ones and zeros, right? So in Ethernet we use something called Manchester encoding, but we also use something called analog signaling today too, and I'll show you that in a minute. But in this case here, when Bob sends a digital signal, the hubs don't segment the network. They just take that digital signal and reamplify it and send it out, or regenerate it and send it out every port. Right? So this is considered one big collusion domain, meaning that every device is really just in one big network because these wires are all just interconnected together with this, with this device. So this is one big collision domain, meaning that only one device can communicate at a time, and I think all of us are aware that what happens if two devices send a digital signal at the same time. Now, so we're not going to really use hubs today, are we? We're going to use something called LAN switches. Right? They came from bridges. They break, break up collision domains, so every port on the switch is called a, uh, a collision domain, its own collision domain. So now this allows us to have more bandwidth for users. So in this case here, when Bob wants to talk to John, he certainly broadcasts, uh, you know, getting his MAC address. Once he does that, he sends a frame with a destination MAC address of John. It comes over here to the switch. The switch doesn't have any destination port with that MAC address on there or any port with that MAC address on it, so it doesn't forward it out any port. So Sally is very happy right now because she's not getting John's data anymore. 